subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 10th of March. Indian PM Modi's BJP wins big in state elections. AAP wipes out Congress in Punjab. Ruling PTI defectors will be disqualified, says Pakistan's Interior Minister, ahead of no confidence vote. And Tibetans in exile in northern India marks 63rd National Uprising Day. And now for all the details. India's ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, retained power with a big majority in Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Manipur and Goa states as results of regional assembly elections were declared on Thursday. Meanwhile, the Aam Admi Party that rules Indian capital New Delhi swept the election in northern Punjab state, beating the state's incumbent Congress party and bolstering its hopes of becoming the main challenger to BJP. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, retained power with a big majority in most populous Uttar Pradesh, Northern Uttarakhand, Northeastern Manipur and Western Goa states as results of regional assembly polls were declared on Thursday. The outcome is being seen as an endorsement of PM Modi's popularity before general election in 2024. It has also risen Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath, a firebrand Hindu monk's political stock in India, despite the government's much-criticised handling of COVID-19 and fury at farm reforms that were eventually ditched. Meanwhile, up the Aam Aadmi Party that rules India's capital New Delhi swept the election in Punjab state with three-fourths majority, bolstering its hopes of becoming the main challenger to BJP. Comedian turned politician Bhagwant Man is set to be the chief minister. AAP, led by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Trival, beat the state's incumbent Congress party, the BJP and the regional Shiromani Akali Dal by a wide margin. We all love you, Punjab. Today, Punjab ke natije aaye hain, ye ek bahut bada inkalab hai. Punjab ke natije बहुत बड़ा इंकलाब है, बड़ी-बड़ी कुर्सियां हिल गई हैं आज पंजाब के अंदर। Meanwhile, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi on Twitter said he humbly accepts the people's verdict as the party lost all five states where elections were held this month. The outcome has dented the hopes of India's opposition parties, which were banking to form a united front to challenge Modi in the next general elections. A Pakistani terrorist identified as Manzoor, affiliated with Pakistan-based proscribed terror outfit lashkar e taiba was killed in an encounter in Srinagar town of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Thursday. The encounter took place in Hazratbal area of Srinagar and search for two others who managed to flee were underway till the last reports came in. Manzoor was an associate of top lashkar e taiba commander Mehran. Jammu and Kashmir police called his killing a big success. Meanwhile, in a separate encounter in Pulwama district, security forces gunned down two lashkar e taiba terrorists and recovered incriminating materials, including arms and ammunition, from their possession. The encounter began in Naina Batapora area of Pulwama on Thursday morning and was ongoing till the last reports came in. Acting on specific inputs about the presence of terrorists in the area, the security forces had launched a cordon and search operation. lashkar e taiba terror outfit is responsible for conducting numerous deadly attacks against India and is known for creating unrest in the region. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmad on Thursday said lawmakers of the ruling PTI party who will cross the floor to vote against Prime Minister Imran Khan will be disqualified by the Speaker and that no one could challenge that.
His comments came over reports of attempts by the opposition to do horse trading ahead of a no-confidence vote. Pakistan's Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed on Thursday said those lawmakers of the ruling Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf or PTI party who will cross the floor to vote against Prime Minister Imran Khan during no confidence motion will be disqualified by the National Assembly Speaker. Talking to reporters, Rashid said Speaker Asad Kesar had the right to disqualify members as per the 18th Amendment and no one can challenge that. Speaking about the allies of the ruling party, the minister said he was sure that MQMP will stand with Imran Khan. The joint opposition moved a no-confidence motion on Tuesday, accusing Khan of mismanaging the economy and poor governance in the toughest challenge he has faced since taking power in 2018. The Speaker of the National Assembly is expected to call a session by March 22, while voting on the no-confidence motion has been scheduled between March 26 to 30. Moving on. Residents in Gilgit Baltistan have expressed concern over declining tourism sector in the region. They lamented hours of power outages, lack of safe drinking water and poor road infrastructure are keeping visitors away from the tourism dependent region which is already reeling from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. The picturesque landscape of Gilgit Baltistan with its mesmerizing weather and beautiful mountainous terrain has the potential to make it an international tourism hub. However, locals have claimed the region has been witnessing a sharp decline in tourist influx due to the government's failure to bring about development. While they are already grappling with the brunt of COVID-19 pandemic, hours of load shedding, lack of safe drinking water and poor road infrastructure have kept even the domestic tourists away from the region over the years. infrastructure roads वगैरह ये आप देखें फिर उसके अलावा कोई इंस्टीट्यूशन भी नहीं कोई इंफॉर्मेशन सेंटर्स भी नहीं जो कि इंटरनेशनल टूरिस्ट आके वहां पे इंफॉर्मेशन ले सके फिर दूसरी चीजें आप देखें कोविड की वजह से बहुत सारे दुनिया के अंदर हर एक फील्ड जो है ना متاثر हुआ लेकिन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में तो पूरा लॉकडाउन की वजह से मोर देन 6 मंथ गिलगित बल्तिस्तान लॉकडाउन लगा Locals claimed unemployment continues to be another major problem in the illegally occupied region in the absence of any private sector. Locals in Gilgit Baldistan have long blamed Islamabad for depriving them of their basic rights, claiming the agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped. A fall in crude oil prices lifted Indian equity benchmarks on Thursday following strong cues from the Asian peers as investors gauged developments in the Russia-Ukraine war. However, in Nepal, gold prices have reached an all-time high amid the conflict and central bank restrictions on its import. Indian shares rose on Thursday, tracking queues in broader Asian markets as oil prices fell a day earlier after the UAE supported an increase in output and planned diplomatic talks between Russia and Ukraine by its sentiment. The blue chip NSC Nifty 50 index was up 1.87% as of 9.40 am and the S&P BSC Sensex surged by 1.94%. Oil prices fell on Wednesday by the most in nearly two years after the United Arab Emirates said it supported pumping more oil into a market roiled by supply disruptions due to sanctions on Russia. The most important thing is that uh, the situation in Europe is, uh, it seems that it is de-escalating and uh, this de-escalation is reflected in the crude oil prices coming down heavily. Also, the uh, commodity prices and agri-commodity prices have softened to a large extent. Now, if that trend continues, that will be advantageous uh, to India. However, in Nepal, the price of gold set out a new all-time high record on Wednesday as it reached 105,500 Nepali rupees per tola, that is 10 grams, a result of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and central bank restrictions on gold import quota to 10 kg per day.
Gold has high exchange value and is considered an investment and people now are vying to sell their possession. As the market is at standstill with trade nose diving down, experts warn that this would impact Nepal's revenue generation. Tibetans in exile on Thursday observed the 63rd National Uprising Day in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala. The day commemorates the 1959 Tibetan peaceful uprising against China's repression in Lhasa, the Tibetan capital. Sikyong Penpa Sering, leader of the Tibetan government in exile on the occasion, thanked various nations for supporting the Tibetan cause. The central Tibetan administration led exiled Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala on Thursday observed the 63rd National Uprising Day against Chinese rule in Tibet. The day commemorates the 1959 uprising when thousands of Tibetans risked their lives and poured into the streets of Lhasa city and protested against People's Republic of China's illegal occupation in Tibet. Hundreds were killed as the Chinese government stamped a rebellion. Tibetans gathered on the occasion, sang their national anthem and remembered the sacrifices made by Tibetan martyrs. Sikyong Penpa Sering, leader of the Central Tibetan Administration or Tibetan government in exile, thanked various nations for supporting the Tibetan cause for the last 60 years. We wish to offer our heartfelt thanks to various nations, above all the central and state governments of India, and Tibet support groups for supporting the Tibetan cause for the last 60 years. We thank the U.S. government for its recent appointment of the Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issues. The failed uprising forced Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama to flee into exile in India. China has ruled Tibet with an iron fist since troops took over the region in 1950. Chinese government rejects criticism that it has repressed Tibetan religious freedom and culture, saying its rule has ended serfdom and brought development to a backward region. Facing constant threats from modern and sophisticated printing techniques, a Nepali youth hopes to preserve traditional form of printing, the lithography in this modern age of digitization, which is now endangered. Inside a rented flat in Nepal's capital Kathmandu, Kabi Raj Lama is working on preserving the traditional form of printing, the lithography in this modern age of digitization. Lithography, one of the oldest printing techniques, which now is scarcely in practice. Lama grew up witnessing his grandfather making wooden blocks and using pigments to make various prints. Driven by art, it was the year of 2010 when Lama was in Japan for his studies and a lecture of professor took him to flashback and then his real journey into preserving the ancient form or printing to off the foothold. But it was a visit to a museum in Japan where Kaviraj found an eternal interest in wood and stone print techniques which gradually transformed with technological advancement. With strong determination and commitment, he has now started collecting the ancient printing materials abandoned with digitization. After I came back from Japan, I realized that I should preserve all these blocks. So I went to my village and then I asked my relatives, you know, my grandfather and all the people to, um, um, to preserve all these blocks. So they are ready to give me all this block and now I am archiving all these blocks. Amongst his collection, a wood block passed on to from one generation to another. It now dates back to 600 years. Brought up in a Buddhist family with grandfather being a monk, directing and participating in every auspicious occasion held timely. Kabiraj also got exposure to techniques on making of prayer flags and mandalas. His works are mainly dependent on three techniques, lithography, woodcut and etching. He exercises any of the techniques depending on the suitability of the subject. Facing constant threats from modern and sophisticated printing techniques, Kabiraj Lama stands firm on his determination to preserve the ancient technique. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन